Hello everyone, today's topic of discussion is moisture in textiles. Today we will discuss various factors which affect the moisture content or regain in textile material and how presence of moisture in textile materials affect the characteristics of the material. And also we will discuss how to measure the moisture in textile material and another most important part related to moisture content is that when we sell textile material and we sell the material as a the textile part not the moisture. Okay. So, the water content in textile material sometime it gives some wrong weight that is why we have to correct the total weight of consignment that is called correct invoice weight. So, that we will uh, discuss here how to correct this. So, before that we will discuss that the moisture how the textile material receives the moisture basically it receives moisture from the atmosphere. So, before we discuss the textile material first we should understand the atmosphere and also it is not possible for any textile material without having any moisture. So, that is how there, there are actually the acceptable moisture which is internationally acceptable and that is for different type of fiber, different fiber they regain different types uh, levels of uh, moisture. So, all these aspects we will discuss today. today. First, we must understand the atmospheric condition, different atmospheric condition, different relative humidity of atmosphere or temperature affect the moisture regain characteristics. Typically, <coughs> the moisture regain of textile material, moisture presence, presence of moisture in any textile material depends directly on relative humidity of the atmosphere. So, first before understanding the moisture presence in textile material, we must understand the atmosphere. So, it is expressed in terms of relative humidity. Okay. So, what is humidity? The humidity is the dampness of atmosphere and that can be expressed in terms of humidity and there are two types of expression one is called the absolute humidity that means suppose this is a chamber a room so there are water vapor moisture present in the room throughout Okay. Now, if we take the total mass of the water present, it is not in the liquid form, it is in the vapor form. So, mass of the water present in the atmosphere, it is called, so the it is called the absolute humidity. That means, mass of water present in unit volume of air. So, suppose the volume of this room is say V and V in meter cube and if the what total water content in the room is m gram. So, the absolute humidity can be expressed in terms of m by V gram per meter cube. So, this is the absolute humidity. Now, keeping the 
so for same temperature say constant temperature say T for constant temperature T if we inject some more moisture vapor here in the room that means the suppose it was initially it is M 1 for the same room if we inject the moisture vapor some more moisture vapor and after certain time the total mass becomes a M 2. So, the absolute humidity of this room will be M 2 by V gram per meter cube which is more than M 1 by V gram per meter cube. So, this absolute humidity is directly shows the amount of the mass of water present per unit volume of air. Okay. But, so this is a very nice uh, figure absolute humidity, but it is very difficult, uh, difficult actually that uh, it is uh, in a practical sense the owing the taking mass of the of this of the water in this room in a particular area volume it is very difficult. So, we have to use some alternate easy way to express the humidity and that is the that is called the relative humidity. Now, what is relative humidity? Relative humidity is the it is a ratio of absolute humidity of the air to the air to that of air saturated with water vapor. So, at the same temperature and pressure. Now, suppose in this room uh, we are coming back to the uh, earlier uh, situation in this room at te uh, temperature T degree Celsius temperature suppose the mass of water vapor present is M 1. Now, gradually we are trying to increase the moisture content in this room okay. and the moisture content gradually it is increasing. So, initial the moisture absolute humidity is that H A okay, H A 1 is the absolute humidity or absolute humidity at temperature T. So, keeping the temperature constant what we are now doing we are trying to inject moisture here. So, if we try to inject the moisture here, so after certain time the, the, the room will be fully saturated and it will not be able to hold any moisture vapor, then moisture will start dripping like water droplet. That means, at that temperature the air will not be able to hold excess moisture vapor at that condition is known as the, the saturated humidity saturated condition at that condition the maximum water content M max by V this humidity is known as the H saturated humidity this is the a saturated humidity of this room in gram per meter cube. This situation we can actually simulate it is a similar to that of the solu solute and solvent. Okay. So, if we if we gradually mix some say sugar solution sugar in the water. So, gradually it will get initially soluble. So, after certain time that sugar will not be the water will not take extra sugar. So, the sugar will be actually it will be precipitated at the bottom so, that means, at that condition this water it is called this solution is called saturated solution. Similarly, in at this condition M max maximum quantity of water particle present in air divided by the volume and that is called the 
H S saturated absolute humidity. Okay. Now, if we take the ratio of these two H S by H this ratio, then it will be called the relative humidity of the air. Okay. The, the absolute humidity to the air that is the absolute humidity this, this is the H A 1 by H H A saturated. So, this ratio if we multiply express in terms of 100 then in terms of percentage this will be called relative humidity percentage. That means, the actual humidity at that room divided by the saturated humidity at that room in same temperature and pressure condition. So, at the same temperature and pressure condition, so this will be the ratio. Now, here the temperature plays an important role because if we increase the temperature of the room, now it should say T 1 which is which is more than T say initially it is 0 T 0 at T 1 higher temperature the air in the room will be able to receive some more and more higher quantity of humidity. That means, the saturation humidity saturated absolute humidity will be higher. So, that means, your R H percent will get changed. So, that high so, if we in that case suppose H S was H S 0 was there in that case. So, in the room this M 1 quantity is there, but if at higher temperature say T 1 T 1 temperature the saturation humidity will be M max 1 M max 1 which is more than earlier suppose it was 0 M max 0. So, the saturation humidity will be more than the uh, than the uh, uh, more in the higher at higher temperature. So, H S 1 is more than H S 0. So, keeping the absolute humidity of the room as M 1. So, in that case at higher temperature relative humidity will be earlier it was R H 0 now R H 1 percent will be H A 1 suppose absolute humidity by saturation 1 okay, multiplied by 100. Now, this value this value will be less than R H 0. So, R H 1 is less than R H 0 because the denominator here it is higher. Okay. Denominator for R H 1 is higher. So, that is why at for the for same condition same condition if the temperature increases the if the quantity of uh, moisture present is same its relative humidity will be less. So, that is why the relative humidity is directly related with the temperature and also the pressure with the increase in pressure vapor pressure or atmospheric pressure the capacity of holding the, the moisture changes. Okay. So, the relative humidity is expressed in terms of absolute humidity of air at particular temperature okay. that is the actual quantity of moisture present in the air divided by absolute humidity of saturated air. Okay but the temperature must be same and if it is expressed in terms of percentage. So, that means, relative humidity 65 percent what does it mean? We cannot simply say relative humidity 65 percent. The 65 percent relative humidity we cannot say because simply we have to specify the temperature. Temperature we have to specify so, in degree Celsius or degree Fahrenheit we have to specify the temperature then only we can tell. So, R H 65 percent means the absolute the ratio of the absolute humidity 
is 65 percent to that of the, sat at the saturated humidity. Now, standard testing conditions are specified because uh, otherwise if we change the standard change the humidity or temperature that the total result total uh, test result will get affected. Okay. So, uh, relative humidity is specified as 65 percent plus minus 2 percent that is the internationally accepted relative humidity for testing textile material. If the testing uh, if we test the textile material at higher relative humidity then total all the characteristics will get affected that we will discuss today. And the temperature in throughout the world actually it is two standards are normally followed. In cold countries 20 degree Celsius plus minus 2 degree Celsius is the temperature is followed and tropical subtropical country we follow 27 degree Celsius plus minus 2 degree Celsius. Now, now how to measure how to measure the relative humidity. So, as we have just uh, discussed that the relative humidity is a measure of content of air okay. content of how much moisture present in the air that is the relative humidity. Now, the basic way of measurement it is called dry bulb wet bulb principle. This is one simple thermometer it is called dry bulb Okay. This dry bulb thermometer it is placed in the room in this room suppose it is a dry bulb in the atmosphere it is kept. Now, this records the temperature of the room. So, at normal temperature it is recording it records the temperature. So, that we can record this is called dry bulb another thermometer here in this thermometer here there it is wrapped with some wet cloth or something okay. and this wet cloth should be always it should be wet it should wet and there will be some water source. So, now if it was why is it okay, why uh, what is the principle why should we do this because suppose it is kept dry it is uh, the, the, this system is not there this is not done. So, th what will happen the, the in that case both the thermometers this thermometer they will show same reading in that case if it is dry. Now, in that after that what we do we are keeping we are dipping this this bulb under water simply we are dipping it this is water this bulb is dipped. Now, will it work? It will not work because it will simply measure the temperature of water. What we want? We want to measure the humidity present in air. Now, humidity present in air we can measure by evaporation method. Suppose, we are keeping something dry uh, wet material here. Now, if the humidity is less, suppose this is one air condition, condition another room is having very less humidity present in the air. Temperature is constant exactly same temperature. Now, 
in both the rooms we are keeping some wet cloth same wet cloth now in which case which room say this is room a or this is room b in room b we will find that the cloth is getting dried up quickly and in room a this is not at that fast rate because the con moisture content moisture present in room b is very less so that's why it will try to take moisture at faster rate so as it is taking moisture at faster rate so due to then that means it's getting moisture is getting evaporated so the it will during evaporation it will the water particle will take the moisture particle will take latent heat from surrounding area now here instead of doing dipping this under the water here what will happen the water particle will not get evaporated at that fast rate only it will get evaporated from the surface at slower rate but if we wrap this bulb of this thermometer with wet cloth and then let the water get evaporated from the wet cloth so depending on the moisture content moisture present in the atmosphere the rate will change that means as the moisture present in the atmosphere is less if it is less then rate will be at higher rate so that means it will take receive it will actually take latent heat at very higher high rate so then what will happen as it is taking latent heat from this around uh, this uh, area so it will take latent heat from the bulb of the thermometer and so the temperature will drop gradually temperature of the this wet bulb thermometer will drop immediately okay so that the and then this difference in temperature is the indication of presence of humidity on the other hand if the room is fully saturated like this the rate of evaporation of moisture vapor will be very slow so it will take latent heat at very slow rate so the difference it will the, the temperature drop will not be that much so the difference will be less that means the difference in wet bulb and dry bulb temperature indicates the presence of humidity at that atmosphere okay so this dry bulb wet bulb so here now we have to supply another thing we should not forget to connect the other end of the this week this is this must be one weak material we should not forget to attach this with the water source if we don't do if we only wrap with the some wet cloth what will happen after certain time this will be dried up and in after if it is getting if it is dry then again this temperature will go up and this will be say equal so other end of this weak wet cloth should be actually connected with the water source so we must keep the wet bulb bulb always in wet condition another thing sufficient care must be taken so that proper cleaning and proper 
that proper uh, uh, evaporation takes place here. Okay. Now, the dry bulb reading suppose it is 20 degree Celsius for example, in certain condition and wet bulb reading is 16 degree Celsius. So, we, we must take the difference, the difference is 4 degree Celsius and from table there is a standard tables available and from the table we can read that the relative humidity is 66 percent. So, at 100 percent relative humidity as I have discussed the wet bulb temperature is equal to the air temperature, because if the humidity is high in that case the at 100 percent relative humidity suppose in this room it is 100 percent relative humidity. So, that means the this water particle the vapor will not come out from the from this uh, wet bulb that is the wet cloth and so as it is not coming out so temperature will not because it is not taking the latent heat so temperature will remain same as the dry bulb temperature and now so this data if we have say dry bulb reading and we have say wet bulb reading and difference we know and if we refer table we can get the data. Now, let us see this is standard table here in x axis this x axis direction it shows the difference in dry bulb and wet bulb reading okay. that is the difference and the vertical column this column row shows the this is the uh, dry bulb temperature. So, rows are showing the difference at, at certain difference uh, in dry bulb wet bulb temperature and these are the relative humidity data. Now, say at 0 degree Celsius okay, at 0 degree sorry at any temperature at any temperature if the dry bulb and wet bulb readings are same then the humidity will be relative humidity will be 100 percent that means there is no evaporation as we have explained. Now, looking back to the last data, so what we have seen the dry bulb reading was 20 degree Celsius, this is 20 degree Celsius and difference in dry bulb and wet bulb was 4 degree Celsius, we can read in this fashion and that gives the reading of relative hum humidity of 66 percent. Now, here it is interesting to see so at any temperature suppose uh, at 30 degree temperature of room if the difference is 0 it is 100 percent and as the air becomes dry and dry that means the air becomes dry means relative humidity is reducing and here our difference in temperature is becoming higher and higher. So, on the other hand away we can see if the difference between relative uh, that uh, dry bulb and wet bulb temperature is high in that case that shows the air contains the, the less amount of lesser amount of humidity that means the relative humidity is low. So, that suppose you just see for that temper at 20 degree Celsius if the relative if the dry wet bulb temperature is say 12 but 8 degrees 8 degree Celsius in for 20 degree Celsius room if the wet bulb temperature is 12 degree say 8 degree Celsius that means the there will be 12 degree difference in dry bulb and wet bulb in that case that shows the air relative humidity is very it is air is very dry that is 11 percent relative humidity. So, this table gives a clear uh, very quick quickly we can get value of relative humidity. Now, how to measure the moisture present in the textile material? So, it is expressed in two ways one is the moisture regain and second is the moisture content. 
So, moisture regain it is nothing but the ratio between water present in textile material W divided by the dry weight if we remove all the water content in the uh, water present in the material it is a dry weight. So, that will show it is uh, the moisture regain of material W by D multiplied by 100 that ratio expressed in percentage it is a moisture regain. Now, moisture content that means presence of water in material is expressed as percent of total mass of water. So, W by W plus D this is the total mass of material okay, including water in, in case of moisture again it is a dry without any water. So, that is the express in percentage and this the, the relationship between moisture content and moisture regain. If we know moisture regain, we can convert it to moisture content by the moisture content equal to moisture regain divided by 1 plus moisture regain by 100. Uh, similarly, moisture regain we can calculate if we know the moisture content by moisture content divided by 1 minus moisture content uh, by 100. So, this from this equation we can derive this simple equations. Now, let us do some numerical very simple numericals. So, moisture regain and moisture content percent of some materials are there let us see these are the standard materials. Okay. Now, if we know the moisture regain of cotton we can you calculate the moisture content by using earlier formula. If we know the moisture regain so, moisture content we can calculate. So, this is the moisture content and moisture jute moisture. So, as numerical value moisture regain is little bit higher than the moisture content. So, this are the now if we know the moisture content of silk as 9.91 we can calculate the moisture regain value using those equations viscous rayon has 11 percent and 9.91 okay, similar to silk and see wool we can calculate nylon moisture again we can calculate if we know the moisture content in this way we can we can calculate for many other fibers. Now, these things we can we should be able to calculate. Okay. Now, the simple numerical if the moisture content of a fiber is 6 percent, its percentage moisture regain would be approximately just simply use the formula. Moisture content is known and moisture regain we have to calculate. So, this is the simple formula and which is coming out to be 6.38. Similarly, if we know the moisture regain then also you can calculate moisture content. So, if the percent moisture regain R of a fiber is 8 percent, its moisture content would be the moisture regain is 8. So, moisture content will be 7.4 percent. Okay. In this way, we can just calculate the moisture content and moisture regain. Now, official allowable moisture regain of blends. Now, earlier table what we have seen it is a table of 100 percent fiber that is see as I have mentioned we cannot have practically any material without any textile material without moisture. So, except like uh, fiber which has got 0 percent moisture regain that is a different issue, but for other material suppose cotton if I want cotton material cotton cloth without any moisture it is not possible because it will absorb moisture from the material from the it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere. Okay. Now, if we know the moisture regain of individual fiber we can also calculate the moisture regain of blends knowing the proportion it is a simple 
equation for blended yarn the regain the resultant regain is calculated based on the proportion okay. as per example. So, for 80 20 cotton nylon blended yarn if we know the moisture regain of cotton as 8.5 percent that we have seen in the table and for nylon it is 4 percent and as it is 80 20 multiply by 0 0.8 and for nylon this multiplied by 0 0.2 we will get the resultant regain of the blended yarn. So, this is the calculated regain and that we we use for blend okay, for calculating different mass. Okay. Calculation will be based on the official regain of blended material R B. So, we calculate based on the official regain. Now, let us try to calculate the allowable moisture regain of uh, textile material. So, if the blend is an 70 30 polyester cotton blended material, okay, what is the official allowable regain? Okay. It is simply we will use the formula, we know the official regain of polyester, we know the official regain of cotton. So, it is a 0 0.4 percent and 8.5 percent. So, it is a polyester moisture regain is 0 0.4 percent and cotton is 8.5 percent, then we can calculate the official regain of 70 30 polyester cotton blended yarn in the same way as we have done earlier it is coming out to be 6.07 percent and all the calculation all the weight calculation we have to do based on 6.07 percent. Okay. Now, next is that it is a hysteresis moisture hysteresis it is a very important phenomena to understand the presence of moisture in any textile material. Now, Suppose, at certain humidity at certain condition this is the room. In a room we have kept two cloths, one is completely wet cloth, another is completely dry. dry cloth and we have kept at certain humidity. So, this has a room of certain temperature and humidity percent. Let us say it is a standard humidity percent 65 percent humidity and room temperature is 27 plus minus 2 degree Celsius. Okay. In this room we have kept what will happen? The thing what will happen that the this dry material will try to gain moisture from the atmosphere okay. and will the its moisture regain will increase gradually. But whereas, the wet material will try to lose release the moisture to the atmosphere it will gradually be dried. Now, the thing is that that it is its moisture regain it is increasing and its moisture regain moisture presence of moisture is reducing. And if we keep it for longer time we will see the there will be some difference in moisture regain between wet material and dry material. Wet materials moisture regain will be little bit higher always than the dry material and this phenomena is known as the hysteresis of moisture. Now, here the dry material it is gradually receiving moisture absorbing moisture from atmosphere because atmospheric condition is exactly same and its moisture is increasing okay. 
and here its moisture is reducing and this line will for very long time this will remain same for a particular condition. Okay. If we change the temperature and humidity of the room then it will be totally different, but for same room. So, that is this difference is known as the hysteresis effect okay. and another condition here it is a suppose we are what we have done in red color we are increasing the moisture okay, increasing the moisture up to this point okay. up to this point we have increased. Okay. Now, from there onwards, moisture means relative humidity we have increased of the room. So, that moisture regain is increasing. Okay. Now, when once we reduce the moisture relative humidity of the room from 80 to 70, 70 to 60 in that way, it is it has been observed that this curve the moisture regain curve will not follow the same path, it will be little bit always in the higher side. This is also this phenomena, it is moisture absorption desorption curve, it is also the example of moisture hysteresis. So, absorption desorption curve will not be same always. So, desorption curve will be little bit on the higher side. Now, these are the typical moisture uh, regain curve. So, at different moisture regain, if we increase the relative humidity of atmosphere, different material will have different regain value. Now, that is why we must specify the moisture regain at standard condition. So, whatever moisture regain we have seen earlier, those are at standard atmospheric condition that is 65 percent relative humidity. If we change the if we increase the relative humidity of atmosphere, the obviously the regain will be high. Okay. Now, how to measure the uh, moisture content? So, moisture measurement it is very simple. We actually follow two methods one is that it is by oven dry method basically three methods we follow one is directly take the material and then we dry the material in oven to make it bone dry that is total dry material d value we can get and then we know the actual mass of the material and difference will be the the water content and from there we can calculate the moisture regain or moisture content. Second is the it is a quicker method the oven dry method is uh, it is a slower method it takes time, but infrared drying method it is a directly okay. what we do. So, there is a weighing balance weighing balance connected with the that is panel okay, computer. Okay, this is a computer. Now, here we are placing our material. This is the material and the computer will give will take the mass of the material. Suppose, this is the mass it is showing the carb. So, this is the mass of material which is the W plus D okay, water plus dust. Now, this, this is the moisture M 1. Now, after that we will actually the infrared drying it is this this is under in the chamber of infrared drying chamber. Now, from there due to infrared drying this moisture contain moisture will get evaporated as moisture is getting evaporated this mass is gradually reducing this is with the time and this is the mass. 
So, it is reducing. So, after certain time when the material is totally dry then there would not be any change in mass. So, it will be for certain time this will be. So, we will keep on taking repeated the computer will take keep on recording the data and it will compare with the previous data. So, after certain time when the there is no change. So, as it is comparing with the previous data. So, after repeated comparison. So, if the data there is no change then this mass will be it is it will be d. This is the dry mass and computer will record the w value d value w plus d value it is recorded and automatically it will convert it to moisture content or moisture region. So, using the simple equation and third is the it is indirect method this first two methods were direct measurement direct taking the mass of the moisture and second the third method is the using either capacitance or resistance method it is a indirect method that means the presence of moisture in the material reduces the resistance value it changes the capacitance value. So, that reduction in the change in resistance or capacitance is directly proportional to the moisture content and this every all these instruments they have been actually pre calibrated and there are probes that probes simply at so that can be actually this uh, there are different types of probes available in uh, for this type of moisture tester probes available for raw bale cot bale of cotton or bale of fiber loose fiber or package form in cone form or even from the surface from the fabric surface that there are different types of probes available but the principle is either capacitance or resistance change which is proportional to the content of moisture, moisture presence of moisture. So, this is one example this is the these are the probes different types of probes are available these are interchangeable probes and this probe if we penetrate inside the say cone uh, and this will directly give us the value of moisture region of the cone. So, this different longer pore probes are available for say bell metal we can get the data of moisture content moisture present inside the bell. Okay. So, different methods are available and now the fiber characteristics. So, there the fiber properties are affected by presence of moisture first is the swelling the fiber gets swelled most of the fibers after actually receiving the moisture. So, swelling in diameter and fabric shrinks that during the moisture absorption. So, shrinkage of fabric occur due to the swelling of the yarn. Okay. Now, let us see how shrinkage occurs. Suppose this is these are the one thread say webbed threads okay, and this is warp. So, I can put webbed with a red okay, this is working. Now, when it is dipped into water, so it absorbs moisture. What will happen? The diameter of fiber, also the diameter of yarn, will increase due to the swelling. Okay. Now, when once it is swelled, this yarn becomes, say, theoretically larger size. Okay. Now, after swelling the fibers actually diameter wise it it is increase diameter increases, but length wise it is not. Okay. 
length wise it does not change due to the molecular alignment of the fiber. So, once it is the diameter increases, but the length of yarn is not say warp yarn it is not changed length being same. So, it will try to wrap around this. Now, what will happen in doing this th this has to follow longer path, but the length is same. So, this will have inward force this will try to pull the this web threads inside. So, the instead of this what will happen this was the initial width this will become closer and in this way total dimension this is happening in say warp direction similar thing will happen in wave direction. So, the total length is shortened. Now, this is the condition in wet condition. Now, what will happen to the in, in case of dry condition? In case of dry con when it is dried again what will happen? The moisture will come out and the diameter will again shrink to its original condition, but as there is no other force which will extend this, this dimension will to some extent remain on that condition. So, what will happen the condition after drying will be like this. instead of this it will be little bit loose types. So, that, that actually that is how the due to swelling the shrinkage of the textile material most of the textile material which absorbs moisture it actually increases. Okay. So, and the advantages of swelling is taken in designing the waterproof like uh, different like uh, umbrella cloth we take that this advantage of swelling. So, when in dry condition there will be some pores, but once it absorbs moisture it gets it is swelled and then it the pores are blocked. So, waterproof designing we take advantage of this technology this uh, principle. Another is the wrinkle appearance of shoot what happened if we actually if we test if we stitch sorry if we teach stitch the warp against the weft in that case what will happen the warp shrinkage and weft shrinkage will be different at different humidity level. So, that means the shrinkage will be totally different at differential shrinkage will actually result wrinkle appearance of shoot. If it is stitched at with warp with weft or with different shrinkable material. So, that is prominent when the relative humidity changes. So, moisture and fiber properties. So, that next is that the mechanical property with the increase in moisture regain the strength of the cotton fiber increases. Okay. There are some uh, many theories one can go through, but if we see in case of viscous it is just reverse. So, for if we test cotton at in the wet condition the it is it will show higher strength, but in case of viscous it drops. Similarly, electrical property with the increase in moisture regain the resistance electrical resistance reduces. Okay. So, that using this 
principle as I have already mentioned, if we use this principle and then we can design instrument for measurement of moisture regain of a textile material. And also the regain affect the static electricity generation. Now, this is the problem, this static generation problem, it is very severe in particularly in spinning, where we process the synthetic fiber. Now, normally synthetic fiber, their moisture regain, moisture regain is low and in case of dry condition, if the humidity in the spinning shed, spinning in uh, mill, it is low. So, it will start generating the static electricity and there are there will be different problems which will occur that is one of them is roller lapping. So, various problems will occur. Okay. So, we will continue this discussion in the next class okay. till then thank you.